Hello everybody, today we are comparing generals, generals of the Wildmen, more specifically clans of Enid White, the Vale of Anduin, and the Dun Landings. I'm, this is going to be mostly uh, subjective, but I am going to give my opinion based on a couple of criteria. So the first one is going to be how are they kind of in a, in a battle 1v1, a dueling situation, then how do they like command an army or how do they fit into their roster and how would you likely use them and then from a campaign perspective how effective could they be given your immediate enemies that uh, surround your starting position and then finally i'll go over the traits for your race if you like um these can have specific benefits to governors or more so for commanders the stats for these three gentlemen, the Anduin, their general comes in with a 24 attack, which is armor piercing. They have a 9 charge bonus, 17 defense, and 2 hit points, with 31 men in the battalion. Enid White's Elder Guildsman come in with an 8 melee attack, a 5 charge bonus, and 15 total defense. Whereas they also have the Javelins, of which there are 4... Uh, projectiles per man with an 8 armor piercing missile attack and there are 79 men in the battalion. The men of Dunland muster a 9 melee attack which is armor piercing, a 5 charge bonus, 19 total defense and there are 78 men in the unit. Let us begin with the jewels, probably the least important part, I would say, uh, of this comparison. But where else am I going to do this other than the gates of Argona? And um, obviously with the Enidwythian generals, they have javelins. So they get a couple of volleys off both on the skin changers and the chieftain's bodyguard of Dunlin. And they were able to beat both of them. But I feel like this is a... Um, it, it's okay for this to happen because, you know, they have the javelins. And they still had a few more to spare, worth uh, worth noting. But um, as I went over then to the other generals, I kind of went to the grassy plain because, um, well, I mean, they all get benefits in grassland anyway. It doesn't particularly matter. But here we see it's kind of a focus on... I mean, I was able to win in the battle between the skin changers and the Dunlending general. Um, as be either side just depending on who I was controlling and I think here is why these jewels don't really work is because the AI likes to have guard mode on and then they do some weird maneuvers due to that regardless the uh, ended wifey in general was able to beat both of the two opposing generals and the Dunlending one was also able to beat both of those however the um, skin changes of the Anduin I couldn't beat the Enid Wythian generals even as I was controlling uh, the skin changes myself. So that's quite interesting, just showcasing the power of the javelins. Now we move on to how these general units fit into the overall roster and how you could best apply them. Now the Enid Wythian general, of course, they're decent in melee, but their real power is in their javelins. They are armor piercing, of course, but Enid Wythe already have javelin units they have the angrin raiders which you'd probably want to get a lot of particularly as well as soon as you can they're great against armor and there's more of them in a unit so that does kind of bring down the value of the general they're just basically a, a cut down version of that unit i'm not saying that they're bad but they don't really add a whole lot to the roster they're not going to win you perhaps a battle because like you, you can get other units to do that for you but we'll move on then to the Dunlending one and again they are just an AP melee infantry unit now these guys are actually worse than the Breland bodyguards and whilst like Dunland in general have a very strong roster these guys are kind of mediocre in that aspect they'll hold the line well but as I was kind of saying with the Ended Wythe in general these guys are really not going to win you a battle. The Ended Wythian one, you can still kind of uh, snipe a, a general or something like that. But these guys, they're just pretty much, you just run them into melee and that's kind of that. And their stats aren't amazing, so probably won't do a whole lot. But you do still have the cavalry. Uh, Dunland have very good charge cavalry, particularly like mounted war bandit. If you go high, you've got the Eisenmach Raiders. So... Um, yeah, these, these are also a little bit underwhelming. You can probably see where I'm going with this one, because now we get to the skin changes of the Anduin. And I would say 
if you don't have, well, like you need a skin changer, at least one in every army as if you're playing as the Android. These guys have such huge and monstrous stats. Now they've got huge, um, they've got huge charge. They've got um, the movement rate and movement speed rather is plus 20%, which kind of makes them function almost as a pseudo cavalry unit because they've got that high charge, high attack, melee, um, armor piercing, all of that. And on top of that, they actually cause terror. And when you factor that in, I think that is a really good, uh, good addition to this unit. And I'll get to that later on uh, in just a moment, actually, because of likely use cases. But these guys can just do it all. Um, the only thing that you'd really have to look out for is that they do, they are low in number. And as you saw in the jewels, that they can get taken out by missile fire. The likely use cases then, it's very unlikely that you're going to send in your javelin bodyguard immediately into melee before, you know, you want to first expend that ammunition. Now, on the campaign map, particularly this is going to be an issue in version 5, is that Ended Wife is going to have the grudge match against Dunland. Now, these two generals, um, I would say that the Ended Wife in general is always going to have the upper hand because how I personally like to play as Ended Wife is you just recruit all these like trash tier units and you just uh, run them at the enemy and then you go around the side or something with like your javelins and then you just pepper them from behind and you just kill them all. Now, if you do this with the general unit, the Ended Wife in general unit, you can just um, kind of uh, bog down the Dunlending general and then shoot them from behind and then you will just wipe them out with probably only three of your four volleys is it so uh, whereas the dun landing general like you're never going to catch the other guy if they want to run away so i i think they definitely have the upper hand there as i said the dun landing general will lose in a 1v1 even against the Bree land bodyguard now uh, aside from that you're obviously just going to be up against rebels playing as the uh, dun landings or the ended wythians so that's not all that important and once you've cleared all that out you've basically won the campaign now Andwin, they have a much more interesting start Andwin are basically up against gundabad they're up against dol Guldor, and also the goblins of moria but they are good against all of these as i said before though if you get shot by arrows then you're gonna be having a bad time so playing against gundabad in particular because they have quite accurate uh, snow orc archers you need to uh, bog them down with maybe some Balesmen, something like that. But then you charge them in the rear. These skin changes, they will kill the um, the Gundabad general, any any general. And once you kill any Orcish general, the rest of the army is going to rout. And remember, they've got that terror aspect, which is very, very useful. Although you'd probably, like thinking about that, you would probably still want to bog down the Gundabad general before you rear charge them but that is absolutely possible with the skin changes movement speed so they are just like you really need to utilize them to their best ability and uh, keep them on hand finally as a sideshow here on the campaign map all generic bodyguards for Enid Wythe and for the Dun Landings, they all get the trait of middleman which is a very small bonus and um, the plus one farming that's going to be kind of useful i suppose population growth and a bit of extra money uh, if they are governors of a settlement and then the five percent movement points i would say that's pretty useful just like throughout the entirety of the campaign um however the beornings of the anduin vale they are not quite as good they're more attuned to just battle but i don't see how extra command stars are all that uh, useful because you just get them naturally through winning battles but there we are anyway the Anduin Vale are a bit of a, a weird one anyway because they also get Northmen generals which have a bonus to trade and things like that and then they also have hobbits which uh, give se several bonuses to farming so um, you probably won't really want to keep them in the settlements though which is why I don't highly value these kinds of uh, perks how would I rate these generals then well this is largely subjective. I'm not putting these through a rigorous testing period, whatever. And uh, but if I had to like give them out marks out of ten, I would probably give the skin changes of the Anduin Vale like a, like an eight out of ten, uh, possibly like eight and a half. Uh, whereas the Elder Guildsmen of Enid White, I'd probably give them like a seven out of ten. Whereas the Dunlanding General, I uh, they're one of like the worst. Uh, standard generic bodyguards that you get in this entire mod I'd give them like you know like a five 
maybe even a no five out of ten that's that's fine i suppose um but there you have it uh, i hope that you've enjoyed this video um it's it's only a bit of entertainment it's not meant to be factual in any way uh, let me know how you found this video down in the comments but for now thank you very much for watching i'm going with gandalf good day